Hey there, Pastor Eric here from Connection Church in Columbia, Tennessee. The message that you're about to hear, we truly believe is gonna be a blessing to you. So our request of you is if it does bless you that you'll take and you'll share it with others. We want like everything for people to be connected with Jesus. Our desire is for you to be connected with Jesus. Our prayer is that you would be connected with Jesus. But if you share this message with others, they'll be connected with Jesus too. God bless you. Let's get started tonight. You guys want to get into God's Word tonight? Cool. Do you mind if I come down there? Is that okay with y'all? Can I sit on a stool too? I'm really pushing all the boundaries today uh, because uh, I want to come closer to you because this is kind of a, a this is a this is kind of a different message tonight. I'm not going to lie to you. Can you see me okay? Okay, let me grab a stool. Steve wanted you. I want to come join us in the middle. It's a... If y'all want in the back, come forward. It's up to y'all. Come on, let's go. Let's sit and talk together, shall we? I'm going to get my water because I forgot it. So as you know, I, I don't care about awkward silences or transitions. It's a part of it, right? I'd rather, uh, I'd rather just be honest and upfront with you where we are, and uh, I'm just doing this on the fly. So is that okay with y'all? Cool. Okay. So tonight, tonight we're going to talk about vision. I know we've been talking about that for three weeks. Uh, get over it, keep on. But tonight, I'm going to get a little more specific, okay? We've been talking about, two weeks ago, we talked about perspectives, we talked about uh, our perspective when it comes to our church vision uh, and what that looks like and that that's not just something that we want to do as a church, but we believe that this uh, vision that God has called us to is something that we all do as individuals, uh, that God has called us all to do personally um, and in our own lives and every day. Um, and so as we talk about these visions, remember, we're not talking about something that happens on Sunday morning or on Saturday night or just on Wednesday nights. This is something that God has called us all to do every day throughout our lives, right? Amen? Agree? So we talked about last week, we talked about our mission statement and one of the main values. We talked about connecting people with Jesus because Jesus changes everything. We talked about how we're all called to be on mission for Christ, sharing the gospel, speaking the name of Jesus over those that are struggling, those that need help, those that need to know him, and how that's not just something that we do on Sunday mornings or Saturday nights on Wednesday. That's something that each and every one of us are called to do in our personal lives. We're, we're shining lights to those that are hurting in this world, um, and that's something that we're all called to do. So if you agree with that, then that's what we do as a church together. So we're called to come together as a body of believers to share Jesus with those that are hurting in this community. And so tonight I want to go a little bit more into detail about the five points of connection. Um, I want to go a little bit more into detail, and, and honestly, these five points of connection are something that we talk about, but it's something that we put into practice as well. We try to put these things into practice in our lives and in a church. So as a church, we want to try to give you the opportunity to have these five points of connection in your life. These five points of connection as a believer, we believe that Jesus modeled this as an example for us as believers to have a healthy relationship on these different levels uh, because Jesus did. And so we want to encourage you guys and every single one of us to get into these types of relationships and these different levels of relationships because Jesus modeled that for us. Um, so we're going to get a little bit more in depth, but then what we do in church, at our church uh, is we try to get, we get to a point to where we go, okay, well, we do self-assessments as a staff every once in a while, every quarter, or every half a year or so, and we go, okay, what have we been really good at for the last six months, and what, it, what which one of these have we really struggled in, or do we need to promote more, or do we need to try to get people encouraged into more? And so we look at this as a staff and say, okay, well, for the next six months, we're basically like setting priorities, and, and what can we really try to hone in on? Which one can we really put the word out? Which one can we really get people connected into? Because we really do truly believe that uh, Jesus set the example that he wishes that we would have all five of these points of types of connections. Um, and so, so what we've done as a church staff is we've discussed it about for the Wayne Street campus and for those on Sunday mornings, 
Uh, the areas that we really are, haven't been pushing, that we're trying to push more and try to advertise more is the, the three and the 12. The, we call them D groups and C groups. Um, but those are the areas that we believe that the Wayne Street campus and those on Sunday mornings are really trying to encourage those. But as I was praying over it this week and praying over, Lord, where do you want me to take this message? Where do you want our priorities to be? Where do you want my focus to be? And I believe that it's in the congregation. I believe that it's going to be in the 120 or the 72 or 120. I believe that that's where the Lord is calling us to build a congregation. Uh, we're, we're, we're taking a, a group of people who have told and committed that they want to go across town and to build a church and to plant a church. And most of you don't know me from Adam. And most of you don't, I don't know you from very, very far either. And I want to get to know those. I want to get to know you. I want to know those that are our core group of people that are invested in joining us for this mission across town and to be planted. And so I think that that's where the Lord's laying on my heart to really focus over for the next four or five months about is getting to know us as a community, to build us as a community of core believers and those of us that invest in each other and so that we can take that across town or wherever the Lord leads us to go. Um, so let me start with number one, and I want to get a little bit more in detail with these so that you can see how we stack these up in priorities with, with us as a church and what we believe um, that our healthy Christian life. The first and foremost is number one, and that's our relationship with Christ. That's based off of Luke 9, 18, and that's where Jesus is praying alone. Uh, it, it takes a time. And so in Luke 5, 16, it says, but Jesus would often withdraw to desolate places to pray. Jesus set that example for us is that his relationship with the Father was priority for him. In fact, he said, I can do nothing without the Father. And I can't say anything without the Father. His relationship with the Father was his number one priority. And he set that example for us. And so we as a church, and we as a future church and a church plant, one of our main focuses is always going to be our personal relationships with Christ. It's just, it's going to be one of the top priorities. The message is, it's always going to be about driving each and every one of us to be more connected to Christ than we were yesterday. Um, and so that's always going to be one one of the top priorities for us as a church, one of the top missions is to keep people connected with Christ, whether for the first time or to help you grow in your relationship with Christ. And that's modeled multiple times throughout the New Testament. Galatians 2.20 is talking about dying to self and living for Christ. Um, we talk about practicing the presence of God. That's focusing on that one, that time in your relationship with Christ that's meaningful to you. And, and this should be our number one priority. Um, so that's one of our top priorities, and it's a lifelong journey. Uh, we believe that connecting people with Jesus or continuing to connect you with Jesus is not just a one-time thing. It's a continuous, lifelong partnership. And that's what we want to see, and that's what we want to promote. And as a church, and as a church plant, that's what we want to keep pushing forward. So that's the one. Number three is confidants. Uh, we see this in Luke chapter 9, verse 28 through 36. Jesus is transfigured in front of Paul, James, and John. He takes John, Paul, James, and John consistently alone and prays with them and spends time specifically with those three. They're called the inner circle, or his, his, his confidants is what we call it. Um, and then we see that again in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, where Jesus goes forward to pray in the garden, and then he goes a little bit further with his three, and then he goes a little bit further to the one and prays. Um, and we see that again at the Great Commission, um, no, nope, that's supposed to be under 12. We see that, we see that consistently in the, in the, in the times with, in Jesus' example, is that he gets alone with the three and invests in the three. This is our level, what we call D groups or discipleship groups. This is the level of relationship that is based on being made a more, a better disciple and making disciples at the same time. Uh, we believe that a healthy Christian has someone to invest in you while you're investing in someone else. It's a, it's a continuous growing relationship to where you find someone who may be farther along or farther advanced in their faith and you ask them to pour into you, to mentor you, to help you grow in areas that you struggle in. But believe it or not, whether or not you're a brand new Christian, you can still disciple people. You can still be a disciple or you can find someone who doesn't know how to, or an area that you are, you are getting more proficient in because we're never going to expert and hit expert level in all of these things that we're trying to, trying to pursue in our lives. But there's always someone that we can teach our children 
It's an area that we can invest in and to, be, and to disciple them. So this area, is D groups, is, is one of the areas that, um, and so when I say that we're making this not our top priority, it's not to say that we're not going to have them. Um, we are going to have D groups at our church plant. We are going to have these relationships to where we're mentoring people and people are mentoring us. It's a part of a healthy relationship. So if you have an interest in D groups, right now our D groups are still combined with the Wayne Street campus. And so if you have any interest in being discipled or to maybe disciple someone else, uh, we have an interest meeting next week, or tomorrow actually, tomorrow after the second service where you can come in here and find out more about how we do that, the program that we have set up to disciple people or to be discipled. Uh, If you have any interest in that, we can talk about that after this. Same thing with connect groups. That's where we have the 12. Jesus set the example of the 12 with the 12 disciples. And so we see that he had multiple people that he lived life with, uh, those that he invested in. But it was a different level than the confidants. It was a different relationship. Did he invest in them? Absolutely. He 100% invested in these 12 men and sent them out. We see this multiple times throughout the Gospels, Jesus appearing to the 12 disciples post-resurrection. We see this constantly, that Jesus keeps his 12 around him. We take that and we, we do our small groups or our connect groups with that. Um, And so we have connect groups that meet all throughout the week um, on Sunday nights, Thursday nights, uh, Tuesdays. There's small groups that meet all all the time. So if you have an interest in joining a small group, small groups really are about uh, building relationships. It's really about finding people that are in a similar life stage than you that can relate to it. So so for instance, I have a, I I teach a, a I teach a connect group on Sunday nights uh, for families with young children. I have five kids. My, I have my 13-year-old daughter back there, uh, and then I have four under the age of seven. And so I have a bunch of young, a family with young kids that fits my life pretty pretty well. And so anybody else, um, Thomas, who's back there in the hallway, is one of our, our members of our Connect group. And we come together every Sunday night, and we either take a nap just kidding. We, we feel like it's some Sunday nights. We come together, and we complain about our kids. No, like there's the, that level of we all or in that same stage of life, potty training, putting kids to sleep at night, uh, night terrors, like struggles with health issues, like the flu, ear infections. These are things that all of us are going through at the same time. So let's be there to help sh- sh- shoulder that burden together. Help us to be there to walk this life together, to invest in each other, uh, to be supportive of each other. But we also study God's word. We get in every, th- every Sunday night, we get into the book of Hebrews and we study the word of God and we learn about what it's like to be a parent through the word and how we can teach our kids these things. So that's just an example. There's many other connect groups that meet throughout the week that have these similar things, similar stage of lives or, or, or lives that you can be invested into. So if you have any interest in connect groups, at the moment we don't have any specific connect groups for the church plant, but we plan to do that in the future uh, when we have time and space and we build our community group and things like that. But if you have any interest in joining that, there's, there's a ton that meet throughout the week. Um, and so if you have any interest in that next so tomorrow, uh, after the second service, we have that interest meeting, and you can have, come in here and you can find out what connect groups, or you can go on our church app and see what connect groups we have. You can talk to Miss Cindy. You can talk there. We can help you find a place that you can get further connected into people in a similar stage of life. Now, the 72 or the 120 is the next one, is congregation. We're going to get a lot more into detail about with the vision that I feel like that God has laid on, laid on my heart for us as a congregation. But we see that in Luke 10, 1, where Jesus sends out the 72, two by two, into towns to minister and cast out demons and to heal people and to preach the kingdom of God. We also see that at the end of, after Jesus is resurrected, after he ascends into heaven in Acts 1, 15, there was 120 followers of Christ that were together in the upper room praying when Peter stood up and took his leadership position. Um, we're going to get a lot more into that here soon, so we'll, 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 we'll continue on. So community is the next one. Uh, in Luke 9, 14, Jesus teaches the kingdom of God, and he feeds the 5,000. Uh, we, we, we often, I found myself often forgetting that first part. And Jesus feeds the 5,000. Well, we missed the part that he actually, he says he was teaching the kingdom of God to them. 
and he fed them. So he met them spiritually and physically needs and physical needs. And so that's what we are called to do in our communities where God has planted us. Right now we're in Columbia, Tennessee, and we're investing in the people of the, of the, of the of a Boys and Girls Club, of the schools of Murray County and things like that. We're called to be investing in our community, and those are the ones that we are supposed to be reaching with the name of Jesus. And so we're going to look for our community. And once we find our community, it's going to become a priority for us. Um, But right now, our priority, I believe that the Lord has laid on my heart, is to build a congregation of believers to come together, to want to celebrate together and live life together and invest in each other and worship together and pray together and go on mission together. I believe that's where God has called us to right now. So... Y'all ready to get into the word? I got a lot of scripture tonight. Is that okay with y'all? A lot of scripture tonight. So if you've got the smartphones and you can go back and forth, it may be really easy. Uh, I'm going to try to stick with my, my, with my, with my paper copy. I, I love my paper copy of the word of God. Um, and we're going to get further into this. So there's three things that, honestly, I was praying about this. And it was really Thursday afternoon that God kind of just like hit me right across the face with this message. And it was like just this message of where I believe that he is asking me to lead us as a congregation and how We're going to do it. So uh, this is not perfect and it's not for everyone, but this is the message and the vision that I believe that God has laid on my heart. So there's three points of congregation we're going to cover today. It was a very organized outline style uh, message tonight. So let's get to it. So the first one is purpose, okay? And then we're going to talk about structure of the congregation and then the how do we build it. How do we build the congregation? And I believe this is all taken from the word of God. So let's get into this, shall we? Are you all okay with that? Thank you. Okay, so the first point is, is purpose. What are the purposes of the congregation? What is the purpose of a congregation? And I believe the first purpose of the congregation is to connect people with Jesus. That's what we're called to do. That's our main mission. Uh, that's the, the last two things that Jesus said to his followers in Matthew chapter 28 was to go therefore and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. One of the last things that he said was to go and to spread the name of Jesus. He said that to his followers. And then in Acts chapter 1, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And we could stop there and say, yeah, that sounds great. But he says, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. See, we are all called. The last things that we have recorded that Christ said to his followers were go and share my story. Go and tell them about me. Go and be my witnesses and make disciples. In, in fact, in, in Acts chapter 1-8, I've never seen it like this, but we've received power from the Holy Spirit so that we can witness, so that we can be messengers for God in all the world that he has planted us in, the, in this crazy world that he's planted us in. See, I believe that it's very clear that the purpose of a congregation should be, and, and many times in Scripture, should be to connect people with Jesus. Um, if you need more about what that's like, I preached on that last week. So you can go back and watch the video because I preached a lot about connecting people with Jesus and how we do that and why we do that. So if you have any questions about that. So the second thing about purpose, I believe, comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And we're going to read that. Um, and we're going to, and it's to equip and build up. To equip and build up. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 16. And it says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we obtain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ." So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness of deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head of into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is, is equipped When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. 
It's a lot of words to say this, is I believe that the Lord is saying that our job and our purpose as a community of believers is to equip the saints for the ministry and to build us up. It's look, look at, listen to these phrases in here. Until we all attain the unity of the faith, to be unified in faith to the knowledge of the Son of God, to grow in our knowledge of who Jesus is, to maturity, it says to the measure of the fullness of Christ. I'm gonna be honest, I've been stuck on that phrase for a couple of weeks now because he says it again a little bit earlier in Ephesians, the fullness of God and the fullness of Christ. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't always feel like that. <laughs> like I feel like there's portions that I'm like, Lord, do I really have the fullness of God? Do I really have the fullness of Christ right now? And the answer is yes, he's given it to me, but am I acknowledging it? Have I surrendered it all to him? Am I really experiencing the fullness of Christ? That's a tricky question that I can't fully preach on because I don't fully understand it yet, but we'll get to that later. I'm sure we will. And then we see that we, we don't want to be children tossed by the waves of false doctrine and people that are leading us astray or, or I'll even throw in we don't want to be tossed to and fro by the mainstream media that throws fear at us constantly and doubt and worry we don't want to be tossed back and forth we want to be people who are growing up strong in every way in Christ and that we build ourselves up in love so I believe that's a purpose of the community of believers in the congregation that God has called us to be, ones that equip us to do the same, one to do the work of the, to equip us to do the work. Um, let me just read it because I can't say it out loud. Apparently, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and for building up the body of Christ. See, I believe the third purpose that Scripture shows us is the purpose for a community and for a congregation is to build up community. And go to Acts chapter two with me. Said we're going to bounce around quite a bit, so I hope your fingers are moving well. Acts chapter 2, and we're going to be in verses 44 for through 47. So I believe that one of the reasons why we have a congregation of believers together is to build community within us. And 44 says this, And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they as any had need. And day and day, day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were saved. Doesn't that sound like a nice community? <clears throat> like, doesn't that sound like a, a, a nice group of people to be friends with? Like, I know that there's a portion of us that goes, Hold up, hold up, hold up. You lost me at sell my possessions and give to those that are poor. Like, I get that. Like, I get that. But if you were ever that poor person that was in need, that is a beautiful phrase. Like, if you were ever having a struggle or a time in your life to where you weren't sure that you were going to be able to get gas to get home, proof right here that a community of believers can invest in someone in a time that they prayed to God and they said, I don't know how we're going to make it to the grocery store. We got groceries already picked out, but I don't know how we're going to make it home, God. And to receive a phone call from someone who did not know that we were struggling to invest in us and to share with us. It, when you're on that side of the, of, the, of the giving possessions, that's a great and beautiful phrase. It's a great community that I wish that we could foster. And not just the selling and giving of stuff, but think of, read these phrases in here. They were together in common in fellowship. Uh, they, they attended church together. They were breaking bread in their homes. They received food with gladness and generous hearts. They praised God together. And they, they, they had this, and everyone around them saw them with favor. They were like, Wow. That's a pretty cool group of people that I want to be a part of. They have something special going on. And I believe that this kind of community is possible still today if you have people that are willing to invest in it. Like one person standing up here and saying that this is what I want this community to be or this is what I believe that God is calling us to have in this community is not going to do it. It's going to take a group of people who are like-minded and in agreement that this is the kind of community that we want to build. 
and all of us invest in it. And I believe that this is counter to the growingly private culture that we have now. It's, it's, it's counter to the private, like everything now, I mean like there's literally a company that is just trying to build the metaverse to where you and I don't even have to leave our homes to go grocery shopping, to go to concerts, to go to clubs, to go to anything like that. We put on these goggles and we enter a metaverse and then we come together, not in human, not in physical touch, but I believe that culture is causing us to become more and more private. And I believe the word of God calls us to come together in fellowship, to sit across from tables with each other and eat food. Some of my favorite memories, uh, like last Christmas, Caleb, when you and Jess and a couple other folks from church, we came together and had a little Christmas party at our house. Um, and we laughed and we ate good food and we had a great time together just being with each other. And, and I felt that I received that food with glad and generous hearts. And I believe that, that, that like Jennifer, when the last time you guys came over, you and your husband came over to our house and your girls were there, how much did we laugh that time and have a great time? And I think we just had dessert. No, we had spaghetti. We had like food. But like we sit across the table from each other and we get to know each other on more personal levels. And we had a great night. Like, I believe that that's a community of believers that God has called us to be. And I believe we can still have that today if we have people that are willing to invest in that type of community. So I believe that those are the three types of purposes, three purposes that God is calling us to. Now, is there multiple purposes other than that? Oh, yeah, there's probably going to be many other purposes that come down the pike. But in the moment, this is the feel like, I feel like the vision that God has cast for the purpose for our, our congregation over the next few months. Uh, the, th- the second point is this on structure. And I'm going to go long. So structure. First and foremost, I believe that there has to be a shepherd. And I believe that uh, Ephesians chapter 4 calls this out. Go back to where we were a second ago. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and for the building up of the body. I believe that God has called me, and I, 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 this is a weird thing for me to say, and I'm not speaking from pride, but I feel like this is like me actually pronouncing out loud that I believe that God has called me to be the pastor and the shepherd of this congregation. I believe that he's specifically asked me to do that. And it takes, a, it takes one that is, it takes one that God, it, it, God has put this responsibility on me according to these verses to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and to build you up and to grow us together and to create this environment where we come together into the relationship together and we grow together, that we invest in this community together, that we share life with each other I believe that that's a relationship and a responsibility that God has placed on my shoulders. Now, I'm I'm not going to do that great. (laughs) This is my first time. Bear with me. Give me some slack, folks. Like, I don't know what we're doing. So we're going to do some trial and error stuff. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. This only works as long as we grow in trust with each other and we're honest with each other. And I believe that God has called me to be here right now in this moment to lead this congregation. And I thank you for being here and being a part of that and wanting to be a part of that. The second part of that is of structure, I believe, is the saints to do the ministry. First of all, I want to ask the question, what is the ministry? And the ministry is to connect people with Jesus. But let's go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, chapter 12, sorry. We're going to go verse 3. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Honestly, it was difficult. For One of the hardest parts of preparing for this was picking a, a verse for this section because so much of the New Testament talks about what we're going to talk about now, the saint, equipping the saints to do the ministry and what that looks like. We could have gone to Second Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians uh, 12 and 13. We could have gone to Ephesians 4. Uh, verses 1 through 7, um, but I, I chose, I felt like the Lord was leading me more towards this Romans passage. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say everything among you, i um, sorry, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For 
as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually, indiv- and individual members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts the one in exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So the point is this. We are not all called to stand on this stage and to share God and share the gospel and and to present an evangelistic message from the stage. We're not all called to do that. We're not all called to go and stand on the street corner on the square and tell every person that that walks past them that Jesus loves them and try to share the gospel. Some people are called to that. Some people are called to knock on doors and try to share the gospel with people. Some people are called to serve in children's ministry. Some people are called and gifted in so many different ways. But the point of this congregation, the point of equipping the saints to do the ministry is this, is that each and every one of you would realize how God has gifted you and called you and that you would contribute to the body of Christ so that we can all as a team connect people with Jesus. Like, that's, that's, that's what he's describing here is that we all have different gifts, different talents from the Lord. And each and every one of us evangelize and, and share the gospel with people in totally different ways. But we all come together with our gifts and with our talents to team up to share the gospel with those in this community. Now, I don't think that we should ignore or neglect 1 Peter 3.15, that we all must be prepared to give an account for the hope that is within us. We all should be living lives that shine the light of God and shine the light of Jesus into this community and the those around us. And when they ask, what's different about you? Each and every one of us should be able to share Jesus in that moment. Each and every one of us should be able to tell them what this hope is that we have that the world is not offering. So here in a couple months, uh, and I'm going to throw a plug in there, Will. Um, This is William Brewer, and I don't know if you all have met Mr. William Brewer. He's officially now our church plant director of outreach. Um, And so what we're actually working on doing is is Will and and a friend of his come together, and we're going to do a a little training session seminar on a Saturday, and it speaks directly to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to try to do the personality test and we're going to try to do a spiritual gifts test. And we're going to look at how uh, you can evangelize using the gifts specifically. How you can find out more about how God has gifted you specifically and then how you can use that in the church and in the community in ways that God has gifted you. So you not be out completely out of your comfort zone. And, and somebody who, like, who, who works in the background and works behind the scenes may not be the one that's supposed to stand up here. But if you feel like the God has called you to do that, we want to give you the opportunity to, to do that. So that's something that we're going to be looking at here in the next few months. We're trying to nail down a date for that. Um, it's going to be something that we're going to try to like get all of us to do and be a part of because I think it's going to be something that's great, something that shows us more about who God has called us to be. Now, spiritual gifts tests are not the end all and, and know everything and, and, and has it perfect. I'm not going to sit here and say that, but it's a great guide. It's a great way that we can self-analyze and spend some time in prayer and see which ways that God is really pointing us and uses, wants to use us. So, there's a plug for you, Mr. Will. So um, we'll, get to, we'll give you more information on that as we come, but we're working on planning that right now. So, um, Okay, so that ends the structure um, of portion of the message. Now we're going to move into how do we create this? How do we create this body of believers, this congregation? How do we create those that come together that want to be on this mission, on these purposes, in this structure? How do we create that? So let's go to Acts chapter 4. I can think of no greater example than this. Um, Acts chapter 4, and we're going to be in verse 42. We were just below that a second ago, but we're going to be in verse 42 now. And he says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayer. 
I, I believe that that's pretty clear instructions for us how to build a congregation. I believe that that's pretty clear for us on, and, and, and this is not some original idea that Brian came up with. I'm sure this has been talked about in churches from the beginning of, from here, but <clears throat> I believe that this is clear directions for us on how to build a, a congregation uh, that God is calling us to. First is this devoted to the word. I believe uh, we, are, we are honestly, and I'm looking and praying about ways for us to dive deeper in the word together. Um, ways for us to be invested and get more into Bible studies to us as a congregation. And not necessarily to small groups or D groups, but like toward those of us that are invested, that are committed to go with us to the plant, that we can find some time other than on a Saturday night uh, to get deeper in the word together. I want to I want to like just study God's word with us and st- let the word of God uh, speak through you as much as it speaks through me. Like let's let's hear what everyone has to say. And I'm working on trying to figure out how God is leading us to that. But we need to be devoted to the word of God. Each and every one of us come together to appreciate that. The second one is this, is fellowship. Um, uh, we're actually planning on events for us, like Will's, like Will's uh, a seminar together, other times for us to get together, to fellowship together. Uh, we're going to be encouraging us to, you know, try to pick, some, pick someone out from a Saturday night and invite them over for dinner, or for dessert and coffee and a board game night or something. Some way to be able to grow fellowship together so that we get to know each other on a more personal level. Um, so that's something we're going to be talking about more in the future, about how do we can invest in each other and become uh, have fell- fellowship together. Uh, the third point is this breaking of bread. In this specific context, it is actually talking about uh, the Lord's Supper, um, and that's something that we will be doing together, um, and that's something that I want to I wanted to teach, and it's something that I want us to do uh, according to Scripture. But this is also I'm going to take it a little step further and say, eat with each other. <laughs> Like, eat with each other. Like I was saying, the, some of the best times that I, it, it's really hard to put on a fake facade when you're yelling at your kids and you're trying to shove spaghetti in your mouth at the same time. Like, real Brian shows up, right, at the dinner table. Like, re, you're really truly who you are when you're trying to talk with food in your mouth. Like, it breaks down some barriers, it breaks down some walls, and we look at each other a little differently because we find out who's impolite and chews with their mouth open and, and those that chews with their mouth closed and things like that. Uh, but it's it's just a great way to build a closer community. So I'm actually honestly, and I'm honestly thinking about doing a potluck on a Saturday here with us, like before the service at like five o'clock or something. Caleb made fun of me. He's like, that's the most Southern Baptist thing you've ever said. And I was like, I completely agree. And I'm going for it. Like, I want to do that. Like sit across the table from each other. Like, let's see who can cook the best spaghetti or I don't know like uh, let's just let's just get together and let's sit across the table from each other and break bread together Um, and I believe that's one of the ways that we're going to create that environment and the third is and the fourth is this is prayer Um, see the Lord the Lord gave me this word on Saturday on Thursday as well when I was praying through all this and stuff And, and one of the things that he's asking us to do and asking me to do is to develop um and and many people don't like this word but he's he's asking me to develop a radical prayer plan for us a a radical prayer plan for us as a congregation and as believers as a staff um, as those that are in those are in leadership a plan for us to join in and make prayer truly the foundation of what we're doing Um, it's one of the reasons why I feel like that we're supposed to do this prayer time in the service is prayer is essential prayer is where we communicate with God. It's where we hear from God. It's where we get to spend time in his presence. And I believe that prayer is an absolute essential that I in my personal life and us as a church, we're going to do better and we're going to grow in that. And I hope that you would join me in those things. One of the things that God's asked me specifically to do is to find people that want to do that and join me in a radical prayer plan. I don't know what that looks like, so I'm asking you to commit to something you don't know what it looks like. But I'm just asking you, to: would you be interested in joining us in a hardcore prayer time to make it such a priority for us that we spend some great deal of time together in prayer? I think that's going to help us grow this congregation that God is calling us to be. I think it's calling us to, he's showing me that this is the priority over the next five to six months. And once we find out where that community is that God's calling us to or leading us to, then we're going to start investing in finding out how we can make community more of a priority. But right now, you're all I got. So brace yourself (laughs) because... 
I want to get to know you. Like, I got to get to know each and every one of us that are invested in this. And I, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. I know that you're not following me. I know that you're following the Lord. And I thank you for your willingness to obey and to go where he's asking us to go, even if it's unknown. Um, and those of you that are just here on a Saturday night for your first time, thanks for being here anyway. <laughs> thank you for being here, every single one of us. I want to pray for us. And then if you have any questions about this, let's talk about it. Like, it's not perfect, and this is just where I am right now and where the Lord's kind of laying on my heart. We're going to continue to go down this path uh, of building this kind of congregation and community amongst us um, because we need to have a, a good personal relationship with each other. So.